Deus Ex Human Revolution Short Game Review Adam Jensen was the security chief for Serif Industries when a deadly attack on the plant caused his brutal injury and the death of several major scientists, including his ex-wife. Adam survives, but only just barely, and to keep him alive, he has to be augmented, which obviously was not his choice. And as he goes through this world, he finds that everyone has an opinion on the subject of augmentation, and the game never takes a stance on the debate. It allows you to make up your own mind whilst making great points on both sides of the argument. Thus it explores augmentations, the, the ethical side of augmentations, which is something that the first two Deus Ex games did never do, even though augmentations have been integral to this series from its inception. This is a revamp of the franchise. It completely goes away from the second one's approach, which was to be a love letter to the first game that does not work at all. And rather than just tweak a few things f from the pretty much perfect form of the first one, it just takes a new approach whilst keeping the core elements intact. You're still breaking into places, sneaking past guards, cameras, robots and turrets, sometimes even turning robots and turrets against their masters. I do wish that the robots and turrets were more effective and more of a threat to you than they are. They're a little too easy to take out, but anyway. And you know, with hacking still being a really important part of the gameplay, and they have a really great system too. And the augmentations, by the way, the ones that you get to use are really cool and almost all new, which was also a major problem with the second one, basically just having all the same augmentations as we already saw in the first one. You, you have an augmentation that allows you to punch through walls, you know, Robocop style, and Iron Man style for those who haven't watched a movie as far back as 1987. You can jump from pretty much any height and use an electromagnetic field generated around you to land safely or, you know, use it to basically knock out, not permanently, but anyways, temporarily stun any enemies that are within the blast radius of you landing. The AI tactics are great, and in general, the AI is just really well done. The, this does have some streamlining, and it takes away some consequences, and, you know, with that said, there's still a, a lot of freedom, and the combination of first-person shooter, cover-based shooter, and role-playing game comes together really, really smoothly. The cover base, the, the, the cover system is the second best I've ever seen, second only to Splinter Cell Conviction, and yeah, it's just incredibly easy to use, and it's also immensely useful for stealth. And you can even create your own cover by moving boxes around. Although sadly, it also always kind of auto-rotate, auto-rotates, sometimes making it difficult to, you, you sometimes use them to block the view of cameras and the like, and sadly you can't rotate it yourself to better block the view. I mean, come on, even Tetris had that functionality. Get with the times. This has takedowns, which allow you to instantly knock out or kill any enemy that, you know, one by one only, or two if you upgrade to allow that. And the... 
I suppose that pretty well covers it. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below, it's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.